Wool sheep versus hair sheep. It is a question as old as time. Uh, I don't know. Maybe for sheep breeders, it is. Most people don't actually care, but they should. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm so glad to have you at the High Mountain Homestead. We are all about processes and techniques to create better soil, better plants, and better animals. So if any of that's up your alley, please consider subscribing. But today, we're going to be specifically talking about wool sheep or hair sheep. What's better for you? Let's get to it. Okay, like all things, it depends. Wool or hair, sheep, um, it depends what you want. When it comes down to it, there are essentially three reasons to get into the sheep business. One, uh, wool. Two, meat. And three, dairy. So, before you can even consider wool or hair, you got to think about what's best for me. <clears throat> wool, meat, or dairy. Then you can kind of start whittling it down. So this video, I'm going to talk about all the aspects of wool sheep in one block, then all the aspects of hair sheep, and then really talk about what the analysis is there. And it's probably fair if I start with the disclaimer that I have hair sheep, so um, I'm trying to be as unbiased as possible here, which is why I'm starting with the benefits of wool sheep. So um, something that I think is really interesting is that wool lambs will usually put on weight faster than their hairier cousins, in their first few weeks of life at least. However, um, I will say that hair sheep <coughs> ha are hardier and they usually have a greater chance of reaching adulthood, which might be because hair sheep are typically better mothers. So not up to a good start with wool sheep, I guess. But let's see about this one. Wool sheep um, do make better club lambs or better 4-H projects due to the longtime popularity of wool sheep. You know when people think of sheep, like your Baba black sheep, have you any hair? No. It's wool. Have you any wool? Um, they're just typically more renowned sheep and make make really good 4-H or uh, lamb club projects. Okay, wool sheep, unsurprisingly, they do handle cold temperatures better. Um, they, they're more insulated, they produce more lanolin, they have more wool. Um, my sheep right now, you can see our hair sheep, it's October right now, and that one back there, um, one of them was sheared in the spring, the other two were have never been sheared and you can see how much of a coat they don't have as we're going into the winter so unsurprisingly wool sheep are better um, in the cold okay wool sheep are almost hands down better dairy sheep and they make some amazing cheeses as well so while you know sheep's milk might not be renowned um, the cheeses are and you might not know it so if you're thinking of sheep cheeses um, if you don't know what those are, some popular ones are uh, Pecorino Romano, Feta, Roquefort, all cheeses that come from, uh, come from sheep's milk. So there you go. Although I have heard that the hair sheep St. Croix can, can double as a, a dairy sheep, but uh, by and large wool sheep are going to be your, your dairy producers. Okay, now let's get to hair sheep. Um, right off the bat, Hair sheep are incredible at turning grass into meat. They are primarily your meat sheep. Studies also suggest that hair sheep will do really well on a completely grass-fed diet, which that's what sheep should be eating anyway, so it's really nice. There's not even a reason to want to feed them grains because they don't need it. Like, they're fine. Feed them grass. Um, I'm not against, you know, small handfuls of grains for certain purposes, um, but it's not a staple. For, for sheep in their diet. And definitely grains like corn, mm -mm. Um, Whereas a lot of wool sheep, they need that extra hot uh, food in their nutrients in the form of grains to really get them up to a marketable weight. Hair sheep, nada. Grass and hay, that's what my girls eat and um, they do just fine. I have great hanging weights from, from my lambs. When I had my first two Dorper rams go to butcher, they were both uh, six months old and my butcher paid me a great compliment. He said, dude, I gotta ask you, I butcher small animals all the time. What are you feeding these? Um, how did you get them so lean and well marbled? I said, I'm just doing what I feel like is right. Just giving them grass and if my pasture's poor um, or the season is right, I give them hay. That's, that's the end of the secret there. And uh, really just goes to show if you want intuitive animals like for meat, hair sheep are a great way to go. 
And another famous benefit of hair sheep is that they can lamb year round. You can imagine how beneficial that is. Um, so every two years you can have three harvests of lamb. A lot of commercial growers do that. It makes for really easy uh, lambing seasons because they're spread throughout the year. Uh, but not everyone does it. I don't do that. I only, I only lamb annually. It just makes more sense for me. But um, really helpful for, for the breeders that want to do that. Another cool thing about sheep, they are parasite and heat tolerant. So they're not, you know, re resilient to that. Like they, they can still get parasites, but I've never had to worm any of my ewes here. Um, and they're grazing on pasture pretty much the entire time, except like I said, sometimes I feed them hay. So that is a really great perk for homesteaders and for commercial growers um, to not have to apply as much dewormer, if any at all. Okay, I might be biased on this, but I'm not making it up. I've heard it from other people. Hair sheep make better mothers. They lamb easier typically. They, um, they're more doting. They have less instances of rejecting their lambs. Just famously good moms. Um, and I've found that to be true on my homestead as well. Okay, and finally, I've hinted at it before, but they're better on a pasture situation. Um, they can get up to a marketable weight uh, with just grass, which is something that wool sheep, um, like I said, typically a lot of wool sheep producers for meat are uh, feeding them or at least finishing them on grains. Okay, so which one is better, wool or hair? Um, it goes down to what you want. If you want dairy, you're going to want a wool sheep. Um, if you want wool, you're going to want a wool sheep. However, wool is kind of a dying industry. It's kind of more of, of an artisanal thing at this point. So, I like if somebody doesn't know anything about wool and says, oh, like, you can sell wool. That's not that hard. You will have a hard time turning a profit with that. So, my recommendation is if you want dairy, go wool. If you want meat, which I think is the future of the sheep industry, go hair sheep. But I do love cheese so much. And how cool would that be to get your own cheese from sheep? Jeez. Okay, so that's it. That's what I've got for you guys today. Um, let me know what you think. Do you raise wool sheep? Can you give me some other facts that I don't have? Because again, maybe I'm biased because I'm coming to it as a hair sheep raiser who's in it for the meat. But if somebody can talk up wool sheep in, in a more persuasive way, hey, I am all ears. I'd love to listen. Um, if this is your first time on the channel, I, I hope this was interesting. I, I hope you subscribe so we can talk more about sheep and other benefits of different breeds of animals and homesteading and farming in sustainable ways. So if that's up your alley, please subscribe and I will catch you on the next video. Thanks for stopping by. Wool sheep versus hair sheep. Gosh, look in my hand while I'm talking. Um, let's start it over. So when you're thinking of sheep's cheese, you can think of feta, Roquefort, Romano, Pecorino. Cheese. Mm,